My name is Red Riding Hood. I have no father, no mother, no fear. An itching urge for vengeance is what brought me here. My father died in a work accident four years ago today. Well, I don't believe in accidents. I believe someone should pay. I came back to the city in search of answers and for the man who ruined my life, B.B. Wolf. So, in case you doubt it, this is no fairy tale, because there is nothing fair about it. I arrived 14 days ago and sought a place to hide. An old woman rented me this dusty attic, and since I must lay low, I hadn't set foot in Ulrica since I was about eight years old. I heard about its downfall from the papers father brought home and the stories he then told. Though we lived in the forest, father came to work here every single day and witnessed this once blooming city wilt and fade away. Granny hugged me goodbye with tears in her eyes. She handed me a basket filled with food. I promised to come back soon with answers and with B.B. Wolf's blood on my hood. Today is a big day, for after two weeks of exploration, I'm off to break into the city archives and retrieve some information. I'm not after a bloodbath. I want justice. So fingers crossed I get there without getting noticed. The curfew cleared the streets and drapes went down along with the sun. B.B. Wolf's iron fist was like a punch to Ulrika's face, bruising the memory of his late father's reign and the city's glory days. The only faces in Ulrika today are the ones on these posters. Hundreds of girls gone missing. Hundreds of families cut apart. Pedestrian friendly. Over time, tin replaced flesh and blood. In the factory as well as in the streets, driving families into poverty and honest men to dishonest deeds. Huh. 
All this tree climbing as a kid finally paid off. Okay, so you guys keep on doing that and pretend I'm not here. The truth behind my father's death was buried along with his body. Lips were sealed and the case was closed, but not for me. I had already lost a parent. This simply couldn't be. For weeks I cried, for months I couldn't speak. Until finally, I was done feeling so broken and weak. I asked Granny to teach me how to hunt and how to fight. Now, at last, I'm ready to make things right. At least Wolf was kind enough to install a cable ride across the river. Kudos. Oh, my biceps are gonna be sore tomorrow. Don't mind me, guys. archives, where the investigation of father's death was put to rest. I must get inside. <sighs> yeah, no way I can sneak past those bastards. in boxes where you belong.
these piles of paper, covered with dust and lies, might just contain a clue to help me uncover the truth. Suspect in the disappearance of Ulrika's women, and my father's death as well? Who is this creature from hell? An ugly face, hiding ugly secrets. And an even uglier contractor, so it seems. Looks like the sewer is my next stop. Well, I'm ready to crack open this can of worms. Now, how about a tin opener? <laughs> even better. Let's go find that filthy rat. Mary sat beside me in third grade. Her hair was fair, her skin so bright. Her mind, not so much. She copied my homework. I ate her lunch. One day, Mary's mother sat in the principal's office crying. We instantly knew, yet another girl missing. Yet another mystery in tomorrow's paper. Her seat remained empty, as did mine the following day. Her father and granny agreed the city was no longer a safe place for me to stay. Well, this is a part of town I've never been before. Wouldn't recommend it to visitors, that's for sure. Home to rats and bats, and to that musical piece of kidnapper scum. I can't wait to break his flute, and make that bastard forever mute. must be friends with that other rat. The one with the flute, right?
Believe it or not, normally I love all animals. Granny taught me how to hunt, how to fight, and how to run, but not swim. <coughs> Lovely odor. I wish I'd left my nose at home today. Creatures from hell could live in this kind of smell. And I thought I had a crappy place. Come on, you pie piper. I'm running out of patience. Time to show your face. Holding my own feet to the fire wasn't exactly what I had in mind.
Ugh. Looks like Ulrich is having a bowel movement. Someone should really send a plumber down here. When father met my mother, it was love at first sight. Marriage soon followed with a handful of guests and a spit-roasted pig. Their future looked bright. Until one day, she didn't come home. On the table was a note. I'm picking flowers in the woods. Another search notice in the paper. An insufferable tragedy for the hoods. Jock, your mother must be proud. I'll get you. Just you wait. So, this is where he's hiding. Not only his creep self, but those poor girls as well. I can smell their fear. The bad dreams haunting them at night. Their pillows wet with tears. Mothers unaware of their plight. Devil's dormitory spooks the crap out of me.
Wolf Industries headquarters, where the factory staff had their office, where my father used to slave away. It's in this awful building that his lifeless body was found. A bookcase covering his chest. The collected works of Da Vinci accompanied him in eternal rest. Early that Thursday morning, Hawker set up stalls and goods. When word of his death reached the market and a friend of father was summoned to bring the bad news to the woods. Good thing I'm not afraid of heights. When mother was my age, she came here every week. Granny's healing potions attracted crowds from near and far, as did mother's smile. 
She loved the market, the smell, the noise. My, how she was courted by the bravest of Ulrika's boys. Until one of them crossed the line, and Granny decided to keep her from the city. She was a vision. My memories of her have faded, but I still remember my mother being very, very pretty. Aha! My carriage awaits. Once again, my trusty axe comes in handy. Looks like time stood still here. The smell of old books, pencils, and ink stains on the floor. That's my father, for sure. Father spoke in drawings, more often than in words. Charcoal was his mother tongue. He sketched the most beautiful stories I've ever heard. Grace, what is she doing here? With no mother to tuck me in, it was this tiny woman who stood by my bed and lulled me to sleep. Father made her in 22 days, my thumb-sized piece of comfort. I named her Grace. I'd forgotten all about her. She used to protect me from imaginary monsters. I hope she works her magic on real ones, too. Father's notes, scattered and fragmented, 
like his mind often was. Pinocchio, you rascal. I tell your story night after night. If only my little girl knew how much you and I are alike. Living a life with many strings attached and an ever-growing nose to pay our dues. If only we could cut the cords. Am I a creator if what I create destroys? Is a toy still a toy on the devil's playground? It pays the bills. It feeds my child, but it kills. Innocent people and me on the inside. Oh, Father, what dark thoughts wandered through your bright mind. Dear Mr. Wolf, After careful consideration, I've decided to resign from my function at Wolf Industries. I hereby give you my two weeks notice. Sincerely, Joseph R. Hood. So Father quit? I didn't have a clue. Wolf must have really screwed his mind, if only we knew. But wait, the letter's date. That's when Father died. Is that what I think it is? Did my father do what I think he did? He told me he designed toys. Well, this is hardly suitable for little girls and boys. Father, did these ten cadets, whom I've slaughtered by the dozen, originate from your mind? This can't be true. This isn't you. This is not you. I came here looking for clues, but now I'm even more confused. I need some air. Damn, so much for going unnoticed. Change of plan. Let's play. Catch me if you can. What? Did you see that? Didn't know I had that trick up my sleeve. I can't wait to tell Granny.
As a child, I had an army of men like them. But they were tiny with missing limbs and meant no harm. I still cannot believe these killer ten creations arose from my father's imagination. Did he really throw out all his principles just to make sure I could eat? Is it really that easy to go from bad to good? He never spoke of his work, but we knew he was unhappy. Mother's death took the light from his eyes, and though I know he loved me deeply, in the end, I was only a consolation prize. Well, look who's decided to re-enter the race. Hey, where do you think you're going? Too scared to show your face? Why doesn't this wannabe boat have a steering wheel? is turning out to be a fairy tale after all.
Enough with this cat and mouse game, you evil flutist. This time, you won't get away. This time, you'll speak or pay. Tell me, was it you who took my mother? Do you recognize me as her daughter? Or was she just one of many others, young and doomed to disappear? Hey, I'm talking to you! Smoke it. Gee, can we switch to another channel already? here. Keep the girl busy until sunset. I'm on my way to the forest to deal with the old hag. Signed, B.B. Wolf. Wait. Wolf knows I'm here, and he's after Granny. The only twig left on my family tree. That is just not going to happen. The old hag has trained me well, Wolf. I'll beat you to the punch. You'll see. busy while I escape this cursed old city. <sighs> Always go out with a bang, Granny taught me. I hope it hurts, Wolf. I hope your sheep's coat burns, as well as your evil mind. Now, Let's see this doomed city behind.
Even these woods aren't what they used to be. An underground explosion shook the area last year. Large pieces of forest are since ruined and high afloat. Courtesy of Wolf, of course. Another medal on his coat. this a Sunday walk in the park. Gravity is your only pull here. They really stunk up this place. Nothing smells the same since the odor of evil took over and poisoned flowers, trees, and clover. Ha! I just keep on surprising myself. Take that, you stupid insects! <laughs> Just keep on surprising myself. Take that, you stupid insects. Thanks for the ride. You rock. Thanks for the ride. You rock.
Can we speed up already? I'm not here for sightseeing. An old woman spotted me one summer day, wandering the shores of this lake. I must have been three years old. Calmly, she kneeled by my side. Where's your mother, dear? Trembling, I replied, she's fast asleep. She took me home, cooked me a meal, and drew me a bath. When folding my cape, Mother's locket fell to the floor. She picked it up and instantly turned pale. Could it be the grandchild she'd been praying for? She stumbled outside towards her son, who was in the garden shoveling weed. Joseph, come inside. There's someone you must meet. I remember him walking through the door. He looked at me as if I were a ghost. I recognized the charcoal man in the picture, in the flesh at last. The father mom told me to look for, minutes before she passed. Traumatized and confused, I hardly spoke the first few days. I was afraid to be alone and terrified in the dark, for it reminded me of that place. After a while, I grew more comfortable in the little house wrapped around the tree, and I slowly opened up to my newfound family. With the few words I knew back then, I told father and granny about the angry men, about my life in dust and darkness, and the tunnel mother dug to set me free, about the dreadful day when she handed me her locket 
bid me to go find my father and gave her own life to help me flee. My sweet, sweet grandma, she's probably setting the table, clueless of what she's about to get on her plate. I hope I'm not too late. Dusk is hiding around the corner, and I'm guessing so is Wolf. Oh my, there he is! The devil in person. Wheels against heels. Seriously? You're not gonna get away with this! At least show me your face, coward! Forgot one thing, Wolf. I know this forest by heart. I was not prepared for hurdles.
please. No, I I'll put down my axe. Whatever it takes. I beg you, let her go! Okay, if that's how you want to play. <laughs> Granny, no! Go inside! Please! Let me deal with these beasts! <laughs> Your hands. Give me your hands. Huh? Why? Uh, kind of busy here, Grams. Look at him. Absorb that evil grin. Now, channel your anger. That's how you will win. What? Uh, I'll explain later. Doesn't it? You reap what you sow, Wolf. I wish I could say now we're even, but we're not. An orphan I am, and an orphan I'll be. Your blood won't bring back what you took from me. But at last, at least, my mind has peace. So long, Wolf. I did it! We did it! It's over. It's all right. I'm home, and Wolf, at last, is dead. Oh, Grandma, you're hurt. Uh, here, I'll carry you to bed. My child. Before I go, there's some things you need to know. You're not going anywhere. 
Don't talk like that. Listen, please. It's not over. This is a battle beyond Wolf versus our family. The people of Ulrika need you to make things right and set them free. Wait. Now it's my job to save an entire city? A city that was never even my home. Remember the trick with your hands. You're the only one who can. So I'm some kind of chosen one? Well, I didn't choose to be. If choice were stronger than fate, your father... Yes. Let's talk about my father. And the army of cruelty he created. Don't think ill of him. Your life was at stake. Wolf made him sign a pact. He couldn't break. You lied to me. Only to protect you. <gasps> hey, don't weep. We'll talk in the morning. You need some sleep. Please, sweet Red, do not forget. Ulrika needs you. The girls. Save the girls. And stop the machines. I unleashed a beast. Oh, how I curse my own spell. Forgive me, child. I meant well. Granny, you're raving. I don't... Wait, what's that noise? 